Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. Would you like to have a better tomorrow? I mean, literally tomorrow, not three months down the road. What can you do to make the next day the best day that you have? That's what we'll talk about today. Success isn't always about greatness. It's about consistency. Consistent hard work gains success. Greatness will come. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Today, we're going to talk about what you can do to have a great tomorrow. Just make the next day the best day you can possibly have. I think for me, this is probably one of the more remarkable changes I made in my life because I kind of just had one day at a time. Pop up, there was my day, I did it. Pop up the next day, there was my day, I did it. And while I did okay and I thrived okay because I kept doing what I thought the most important thing was each day. I could have been doing so much better. And one of the remarkable things that I got good at that helped me have really good days is to set up the stage for the next day. And that really helped me make the most of the day, primarily because it takes such little time to do it. With just a few short steps, you can really set yourself up so that the next day is amazing. It's not just a serial string of one thing after another. Your life is made up of one day after another, but it's made up of lots of days. If they all start working together one day after the other, you'll actually get someplace really good. At the end of every day, make sure that you review your previous day. Take a look at what went right, what you need to celebrate, what didn't go so well, and what you could have done better. Maybe you blew up at someone that you didn't mean to. Or maybe you had so much on your plate, you could never really get done with it and it led you to become frustrated. But try to do a recap so that you know you can have a better day tomorrow. Before falling asleep, think about what would a perfect tomorrow look like. Think about what your day would be like if everything went perfectly. Got up in the morning, you ate your breakfast that you set out, you wore the clothes that you set out, You grabbed your gym bag that was waiting for you to take and you drove to work. You gave yourself plenty of time to get to work. And so you got to work on time without any stress at all, even though there was a small car accident along the way. You looked at the notes that you took the day before on what things you should get done. And you saw your nice clean desktop, your nice clean inbox. And you started getting done the things that you set out for yourself the next day. Sure, you had a few interruptions here and there. But for the most part, you were able to do the things that you meant to do. You had a good lunch. You went for a good walk. Try to keep in mind what that day would look like. And if you can help visualize it at the end of your day, it'll help you have that day the next day. Sometimes for people who aren't that good at visualizing things, they do something that they call time blocking. And all that means is that it isn't exactly writing something down in a calendar with half hour increments. It's just writing big blocks of what your day looks like. So maybe if you're not good at thinking about it or visualizing that perfect day, just take a piece of scrap paper and write down in big blocks what your day tomorrow looks like if it were the perfect day. If you're able to do that, you're more likely to have that perfect day. Develop routines. There are a lot of really good books out there about bedtime and morning routines. And if you can actually help automate all the things you do before going to bed, you'll be more likely to get to bed on time and you will have done all the things you needed to do. A bedtime routine might be brushing your teeth, flossing your teeth, light exercise, reading a good book, might be doing journaling, cleaning up a particular area, or just watching a funny video on the internet. And you get into something comfortable to sleep in. I prepare the temperature of my bed with a bed jet so that when I crawl in, it's either toasty warm or chilly, depending on the season. But I have a bedtime routine I do every day. Then the morning routine is me waking up and shaking the cobwebs out of my head, brush my teeth, and I get ready for the day. I take a shower. I get dressed in the clothes I set out. I eat the breakfast I set out and I drive to work early 
But by having a bedtime routine and a morning routine, you'll help automate the things that are easily forgotten and you'll get so good at it at some point, it becomes automatic that you do those things. Make sure that you do something relaxing at the very end of the day so that you fall asleep better, that you're not so tight. Do something like watch a funny show or maybe you do some light yoga or stretching, but something that will help you just get past your day, get rid of all the stresses for the day. To relax, I like listening to Headspace Sleepcasts. It helps me unwind. It makes me laugh a little bit. Some of them are a little weird, but I enjoy doing that right before going to bed so that I can get rid of all the things that are in my brain right when I'm going to bed. Make sure that you're careful about what entertainment you read, you watch, you listen to, because sometimes if you watch something that's particularly gory or you read something that's particularly depressing, it actually can have an influence about what you think about your past day. It can actually infect your mood the next day. Maybe if you saw something that was really stressful, you should stop watching it. Stop doing news if news is making you stressed out or taking it in smaller quantities. But it's just like eating food. If you have food that doesn't make you feel great, don't eat it. And if you have entertainment or reading that doesn't make you feel great, maybe avoid that too. Some things are important. We have to have at least some awareness of the news in the world around us. But I think that we have gotten so overwhelmed with it that we're almost starting to poison our minds with negativity, with bad thinking. And so just be careful about the quantity of things that you do. I know someone who loves podcasts on murder mysteries, but I think that it ended up leaving her feeling mistrustful of the world around her, that murders are just happening everywhere. And so while she really enjoyed murder mystery podcasts, I think it was interrupting her psyche quite a bit. And eventually she stopped doing them. Make sure that you clean up right before bed or right before the end of work. If you sit in a particular place, put the plates away, put the drinks away, make sure your blankets are folded up and they're ready for you to sit down. Because one of the nice things is when you're getting ready to have your next day tomorrow, you just want to sit and have breakfast. Or you just want to sit in your chair and read the morning news or read the thing that makes you laugh in the morning. But if your area is all cluttered up, you're not going to feel very inspired to be there. Same thing with your desk at work if you have one. Make sure that you clean it up, you put the dishes away, and all the pens and papers and notes are just stacked neatly at your desk. I also do this digitally by cleaning off my desktop. I organize it. I make sure there's not a lot of stuff on there. Because I find that coming to work in the morning when my brain's a little groggy and seeing all this stuff either on my physical desk or my computer desktop just makes me crazy. I can't find anything. I can't see anything. So I always try to clean up my physical space and my digital space at the end of either my night or my day at work. Set your breakfast out ahead of time. If you can find ways of making your breakfast the night before, That might be some of the oatmeal breakfasts that you've seen. That might just be setting out a bowl with cereal or the toast waiting for its avocado, putting your coffee out there so it's ready for you. If you can do that, there'll be a less likely chance that you're going to skip breakfast entirely. I'm someone who loves to skip breakfast. It's my favorite thing. But if I make sure that I prepare ahead of time what I'm going to eat, I never have to worry about forgetting or finding myself too hungry in the middle of the day. Even when I'm traveling for work, I try to have a banana set out. I try to have my drink set out so that in the morning when my brain is still quite fuzzy, I eat that good meal that will kick me off for the next day. I think one of the most important and easiest steps I took when it came to trying to make my tomorrow better is that I laid out everything I needed to do for the next day. I lay out my clothes so that I know what I'm going to wear. And not only just the first things, I set out the clothes I'm going to wear in the morning when I'm going to go to work. I set out the clothes that I'm going to wear when I go to the gym. I pack a gym bag if I need to go to the gym and I need to drive there. So maybe I put the whole bag together. And I set out the food and the various other things that I'm going to need in order to do it. I learned this from my roommate in college. 
At one point, she told me that someone was going to come up to my room to buy something she wanted to sell. He comes to the door, he knocks on the door and says, oh, you're here to buy the thing. And I hand it to him and he hands me a 20. Well, unfortunately, this item was like 1750. And I was just about to say the words coming out of my mouth. Oh, I don't have 250 to give back to you. And I looked down at the table where she set the thing that she was selling. And there was $2.50 sitting there waiting for me, knowing that he was probably going to come up with a 20 and I wouldn't have change. And so that lesson in how to prepare for something, that taught me something valuable. It was really quick for her to do that. And if she hadn't done that, this whole thing would have gone poorly. But my friend, by spending just a few minutes of thinking ahead, allowed us to each go our own separate way within minutes. So one of her special powers is anticipating what's going to happen next. I remember once I went someplace and I think it was a concert and loud just doesn't do very well with me. And suddenly I turned to my friend and said, you know what? I think I have a headache. This whole concert is giving. And immediately she pulls out two ibuprofen, puts it in her hands because she knew that loud concerts cause headaches and she was ready for it. And just to the point where I was going to comment that I didn't have anything to drink it down with, she pulled out a little bottle of water. She's a little bit like Mary Poppins and the bag that has everything in it. She's always prepared for every emergency. She always can anticipate what's coming next. Her volleyball team knew, too, that she always had anything they could want. Did someone cut their finger? She had a Band-Aid. Did someone hurt their knee diving for a ball? She had a knee pad that you could put on top of it. She was ready for anything. So make sure that you prepare for your day. Even think about some of the weird things that you would normally not think about. Make sure that you write down the thing that you need to get done the next day. It might come from the book, The One Thing, where you have to think about the one thing that will make the most impact tomorrow. He has you write down the three things that would be most important. But a lot of times, particularly when we're at work or when we're at home, We are better at night or at the end of our workday writing down what the most important thing to do tomorrow is. It's really up in our brain. Oh, wow. I really hope that I was going to get to writing that document. I never did get to writing that document. That's the very first thing I'm going to do tomorrow morning. And then because it's fresh in your brain, you can just leave yourself a little post-it note or a reminder on your computer that says these are the three things you need to get done today. Make sure you set those up ahead of time at the end of your workday or at the end of your regular day so that you can wake up the next day and know exactly what it is you need to do. What would have the most impact? Make sure when you're looking at your schedule for the next day that you set some time to enjoy yourself, whether it's going to be some time to get away and exercise or to go for a walk or just have a really good lunch. But some type of a break where you can just slow down, but make sure that it's scheduled. I find with myself that I can get really focused on my work. And if I don't schedule time to get away or time to eat lunch or time to just exercise, I'm not going to do it. And then I start getting more and more stressed out. So when you're looking at your plan for the next day, make sure that it has some good, relaxing and peaceful time in there too. This one's pretty easy. Make sure that you go to bed on time. I fought with myself forever on this, but you know what? During the pandemic, I decided that I was dedicatedly going to go to bed exactly at the same time every day. And while it was weird, probably the first half of the amount of time I set this experiment up, I was just going to bed. Some days I was tired, some days I wasn't tired. But you know what? Now that I've done it for almost a year, I get tired at the same time every day. I'm ready for bed at the same time every day. So it's not one of those things that unfortunately has a great impact on you, but after time, it will help you get a good night's sleep. It will help you wake up at the same time every morning. By regimenting the sleep and making it more standard, you'll feel great the next day. Someone made the joke on the internet that going to bed early is the new sleeping in, right? There was nothing better than sleeping in to being in bed really late and just waking up and feeling so refreshed. But the other way that you can feel that refreshed is by going to bed early. 
If you go to bed at a reasonable time, you will feel great the next day and you will feel like you slept in, even though you got your day off to the right start at the right time. Make sure, too, that anything that's waking you up, you tackle. So, for example, if your water softener makes noise at a specific time, make sure that you schedule it for a time you're not awake. If that light blinking is bothering you, cover it up with duct tape. I have one of those smart speaker systems and it has a vibrant blue light on it. And when I was struggling to fall asleep, that light was just beaming itself into my brain. You know what I did? It's not very pretty, but I took duct tape and I covered it up. And now it is pitch black in my room. I don't have that beaming blue light staring at me and I get to sleep a lot easier. Something that's on my list to do is I have a neighbor who loves to honk the horn on their car because they want to know the car door is locked. But she gets home really late at night and her father leaves for work and runs his truck really early in the morning. And between the two of them, I can't sleep. So as soon as I see them the next time, I'm going to go out there and talk to them about not doing that right outside my bedroom window. All the things that prevent you from going to sleep or staying asleep at night, make sure you tackle them so that you'll feel great the next day. Make sure that you reflect on all the great things you did today. There is no better way to assure that you have success tomorrow than to celebrate the success you did today. Think about all the good things you did. Think about the fact that you exercised or maybe you ate right that day. Whatever you did that made your day better, praise yourself for it. Pat yourself on the back and acknowledge the fact that you did it. Just doing those things will make you more likely to do those good things the next day. My challenge to you is to take some of these pieces of advice slowly. Pick a couple of them and try them out. See what works out best for you because your day wants to look like you. Whatever pieces of advice you decide will work for you. As my coworker says, you be you, boo-boo. And so pick those things that helps you be you. And now for our entertainment advice of the week. This one comes from Minority Report. A mental paradox? Yes, it is. You're talking about predetermination, which happens all the time. Why'd you catch that? Because it was going to fall. You're certain? Yeah, but it didn't fall. You caught it. The fact that you prevented it from happening doesn't change the fact that it was going to happen. You ever get any false positives? Someone intends to kill his boss or his wife, but they never go through with it. How do the precogs tell the difference? Precogs have to see what you intend to do. Only what you will do. See, if you can become so good at predicting all the things that could go wrong in your life and then preparing for them, either by setting things out, packing them in a bag, and just being ready, you can be cool like Tom Cruise and avoid all the major pitfalls that are going to happen to your life. Consider this your life's minority report. All right, everyone, thanks so much. And thanks for listening. If you can remember to leave a review, I'd appreciate it. And have a great week. <laughs>